Well, Mike is standing by in D.C. with the latest on what the U.S. Supreme Court has been contemplating regarding gay and lesbian marriages and the rest of the world and national news. Mike. That's right, uh, Michelle. Day two of arguments at the Supreme Court over same-sex marriage in the United States. Senator Centered on the constitutionality of a 17-year federal law called the Defense of Marriage Act, or DOMA. This is a federal act. Yesterday, they were taking on an issue that was in California, just in one particular state. Now, DOMA denies marriage as an institution strictly between a man and a woman, making financial benefits for same-sex married couples illegal. CCTV's Jessica Stone has been monitoring the court and has more on the history of this monumental case. And, Mike, it all began with a lesbian couple who fell in love and got married in Canada. But now their love needs the blessing of the Supreme Court. Today is like a spectacular event for me. Uh, I mean, it's a lifetime kind of event. 83-year-old Edie Windsor may be an unlikely crusader for gay marriage. But when her wife of two years died, leaving her the estate, she was forced to pay more than $300,000 in taxes. That wouldn't have happened if she was married to a man. Still, she says, getting married was totally worth it. It turns out marriage is different, okay? And I've asked a number of, of, of long-range couples, gay couples, who they got married. I've asked them, you know, was it different the next morning? And the answer is always yes. It's a huge difference. Wednesday, she and her attorneys asked the nation's highest court to strike down a federal law known as DOMA. The Defense of Marriage Act bans benefits for same-sex couples, including health benefits and even death notification. You'll hear argument this morning in case 12307. The Supreme Court's nine justices heard arguments on both sides, but a majority of five questioned the validity of DOMA. I'm going to quote from the House report here. Is that Congress decided to reflect and honor a collective moral judgment and to express moral disapproval of homosexuality. Is that what happened in 1996? Look, we're not going to strike down a statute just because a couple of legislatures may have had an improper motive. We're going to look, and under rational basis, we look, is there any rational basis for the statute? Eighty-four senators uh, uh, based their vote on moral disapproval of gay people? I think it was based on an understanding that gay, that, uh, uh, incorrect understanding that gay couples were fundamentally different than straight couples. Those opposing same-sex marriage say the federal government already discriminates on age requirements for marriage and don't want DOMA struck down. God instituted it. Nature reveals it. And science substantiates it. Marriage is reserved for the union of one man and one woman. And, Mike, throughout the arguments, Chief Justice John Roberts seemed particularly interested in the political implications as well as the changes in public opinion here in the United States. More than 50 percent of Americans now support same-sex marriage. And, Jessica, any idea how long we're going to have to wait before a decision from this court? Well, it's anybody's guess, but we do know that the court will have to release its opinion by sometime in June. So they have two or three months to make up their minds. We can also tell you that uh, based on the questions we heard in front of the court today from at least five of the justices, there's a lot of skepticism about how DOMA came to be in the first place, as well as about its underpinnings, the motivation surrounding it. Nearly half of the day's arguments, though, were also about jurisdictional grounds. So it's very possible that the Supreme Court to decide that this is not the place for the decision and kick it back to the states. All right, Jessica Stone, live for us at the Supreme Court. Thanks so much. From the legal to the personal, we're going to continue this discussion on same-sex marriage with a same-sex couple. Steve Snyder Hill is a 20-year Army veteran, a current reservist. He served in the Iraq War. He married Joshua Snyder Hill here in Washington, D.C., where the unions are legal. They live in Ohio now, a state that does not recognize gay marriage. Uh, gentlemen, why in your mind is DOMA unconstitutional? Uh, DOMA to me is unconstitutional. This is my opinion because there is nothing in our Constitution that has anything about marriage or, or talks about who's able to marry, whether it be your race or whether it's to a man or to a woman. And I, I just don't even understand why anybody would question that it would be constitutional to prohibit any American from being married, period. 
And when you look at the situation with couples that are married now in the nine states, you're, you're looking at individuals who there's a different experience according to where you live, whether or not your, your taxes are recognized federally. In Stephen and mine's situation, you know, we decided to get married while he was on leave. And we did it, obviously, to, to make the permanent commitment to each other. But then we came back home to our state, obviously, where right now uh, it's not recognized. Well, Joshua, let's, let's pick up on that. You know, as you mentioned, you're married in Washington, D.C. It's legal here. You live in Ohio, which does not recognize uh, your union. How does this affect your lives and, and how you live? It, it, it affects in a countless number of ways. When Stephen was in Iraq, uh, the reason we decided to get married was because a few times while he was on Skype, a mortar actually went off. And he had to disconnect. And basically, I had to wait and see if he was going to call me back. And the reality really hit us that while he's over there serving, if something happened to him or for me, for that matter, we may not be notified or be able to bury each other. And, and that's a grim reality. So when we got married uh, on his leave, while Don't Ask, Don't Tell was still in place, um, you know, it was something that was important to us. And it's a way to try and, you know, get the protections that we need, but we have to fight further in order to get those. You're talking about situations like Charlie Morgan, who was one of the, uh, the, the plaintiffs in our case, and she passed away um, within the last two months. And she's leaving behind a beautiful daughter and an amazing wife. And, you know, we're fighting for, for couples like her and for couples like us. We deserve those rights now. You know, Joshua, you brought up uh, Don't Ask, Don't Tell. So I want to direct this question at Steve. You're a military man. Uh, you've been deployed abroad. Why is this federal recognition of your marriage so important? And, and do you think, since we've taken that step since from Don't Ask, Don't Tell, to where we are now, do you think that the court is ready to make a decision that might go in favor of what you're looking for? I think that the, the compelling thing or that to serve your country, it's a, you give up a lot. And I think that people are just now starting to understand that gay people in general had to lie and had to hide their whole lives to be able to serve their country. So I mean, the amount of what they gave up to be able to serve their country was extraordinary. And people never understand that until you talk to somebody that served their country who had to hide pictures in their own house. So basically, these are the people that have defended everybody else's freedom that right now are just asking for the same rights as all the people that they've been protecting their freedoms. I mean, so I think that that's just really, really compelling. Well, gentlemen, we're just about out of time. We've got about 45 seconds. But I do want to ask you about this jurisdiction issue because the justices keep coming back to it the last two days. Um, and the sense is that they feel like this is something that, you know, we live in a democracy here in the United States, that these are the tough choices that people who are elected should be making and that perhaps nine justices who are assigned to the... I, th this infuriates me because I think that the, the scare from the Supreme Court right now is that if they make this decision, they don't want it on their shoulders that they could potentially cause an uproar or a rift or to change something drastic in society. When to me, what would happen if they change this drastic thing in society would be the same thing that happened the day that we started letting white people and black people sink, drink out of the same water fountain. It would be the same thing that would happen when we let people all ride on the same bus and anybody could take any seat. That's the, the horrible thing that could possibly happen out of this. And I think that they just need to understand that, that it, it's nothing more than that. Steve, Joshua, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Certainly appreciate it.